Hi, my name is Alphonse and today I will guide you through a movement sequence to get the chest more flexible and better organized. As one of my favorite lessons is a movement sequence, is a row of movements. Uh, we don't use stretching, we use the floor instead. It's not just more a flexible chest, but a better organized chest. I hope it will be better organized after. I teach it in my classes and people love this lesson. I myself, I like this lesson a lot. There's many benefits for having a more flexible chest. Let's get started. What you will need is a carpet or a yoga mat, uh, something firm and please come to light on your left side. Let's do it together. And if when you are on your left side, you will notice there is a floor on your left side. To your right, there is this space, wide open space. Do you see my little plant here? I see many other videos, they have plants in the background and sofa and stuff. And I always have a white wall, so I decided to write. So you have all this space where also my little plant is. To breathe. Your chest can breathe to the front, to the side, to the back. You can breathe downwards and upwards. It's like a cube, but you cannot breathe to the left because here's the floor and you, maybe you will feel your ribs here on your left side. First thing you do is just lie there. If you head, cannot hang down to the floor, you need some pillows. Or you adjust your position like I explained in the last, uh, in the last video. So you have more of a side bending to the left. If you have too strong of a side bending to the right, it's hard to let the head hang. But if you're in a straight position, it's easy to have the head down. So, and the left arm is lying, and your right hand, you put your right hand in front of your belly somewhere, just somewhere in front of your chest somewhere, just have it standing. And then the first movement, so we're talking about movement, the first movement you start to explore, we don't exercise, we explore, is looking to your left over your left shoulder. That's right, you're lying on your left side and you have to look over your left shoulder. So it's the face, the face towards the, the, the floor, the ground. You just start to look over your left shoulder and just see how that goes. One thing you have to notice, your left arm is really lying. Your left arm is really on the floor. There's no effort in the shoulder. Keep your left the whole left shoulder, everything, the arm, the hand, just keep it on the floor when you turn to the left. There's no effort in your arm, it's an effort in your chest. Effort, it's work. It's, you do something, it's not, it's not effort, it's work, yeah. When you look to the left, over it. My iPod is running out of battery. Okay, you just roll and roll your head to look over your left and just see how far that goes. That's a reference movement. We'll come back to that movement later so you can see how it changed for you, how your feeling of looking over your left shoulder has changed. And you do this five times, ten times, just as long as it's interesting, you can feel something. And the second movement, so this is still the first movement but we add the second ingredient which is your right shoulder. When you look over to the left, bring your right shoulder forward. So you turn your head to the left and you bring your right shoulder forwards. <clears throat> and so we will notice you take more into account, so it's the whole shoulder girdle that moves. It's not just your head that rotates, but it's the whole shoulder girdle. We try to make a connection between the head and the shoulder. So you, you will notice it's more, it's more and more of your chest that's getting involved and you can feel your ribs and you're like rolling here on the floor and looking over your left shoulder, like your whole spine works together. Everything has to, to work together to look to your left. You can stop the video if you want to play with this longer but I will continue with you uh, to the right when you're ready and do the same thing on the right side. I will show you my back. My back side, you can also see it on your back or maybe you just hear me now because you're on your right side as well. And you come on the right side with the right arm long. The right arm is just lying on the floor. The head is resting on the floor. 
your left hand is standing in front of your belly, or in front of your chest, and you first you lie down for a couple of seconds just to feel like you're lying and you don't have tension in the body, not too much tension, not, not much expectation, just lying on the floor with your left knee on the right knee. And then you start, when you're ready, you start to look over your right shoulder. Just turn the head over to the, to the right. So there's a rotation in the cervical spine, of course, in the neck. The head rotates on the neck. And then already you start to take the left shoulder forwards as well. So you will feel... It's a movement with the whole upper body, with the shoulder girdle as well. And then you come back <coughs> onto your back. Just take a, a short rest, just to lie there. And feel how it is to lie there. Where is your shoulders? How is your head resting? Your legs? Is everything comfortable? I hope it's comfortable. And then come back to your left side. And this time, <clears throat> put your right knee in front of your left knee on the floor. So we call this constraint in English. Constraint. <clears throat> it's, and then your left arm is long and your right hand is standing in front of your chest or your belly and the head is resting, just the same thing and then rotate your head to the left over your left shoulder and it's again it's an exploration, it's not an exercise and with this constraint you will notice if you, if you, don't, if you don't move your knee on the floor but have your knee just standing there so then you don't have this movement in your pelvis anymore. When you had your knees on top of each other and you look to the left, you had, you could shift your pelvis, you could shift your knee, but when you have the knee on the floor, it's more of a constraint. And we have to look for the movement in the upper body, in the thoracic spine. And see how that works. How can the upper body rotate to accommodate that movement of looking to the left, over the left shoulder, without using the left arm. Don't push yourself up, don't push yourself from the floor with your left arm, just look to the left. And come back and take short rests in between. Short rests, yeah. And then take a break again. So this is our reference movement. We're already starting to improve this movement, to organize it, to get everything working together, get the cervical spine work together with the thoracic spine, have uh, this, all this movement and twisting in the chest. So, uh, let's, do, let's do one more thing. Uh, come onto your left side again with the knees on top of each other, the hand in front of your Belly, left arm is resting. When, when you look to the left, when you look to the left, try to make a little bit of a, try to make a little bit of an extension. Like bring your the head, the back of your head backwards when you look over to the left. To clarify this movement, we can have an auxiliary movement. Introduce an auxiliary movement. Please come to lie on your Belly on your front side with your forehead on your hands, and then just lift your head a little bit. You lift it as if you would look, want to look up, and then bring it down again. If you would be standing, this would really be looking up to the sky or looking up to the ceiling. It's just a lifting of the head, and that's, that's what I mean with bringing the head backwards, bringing the back of the head backwards. It's a lifting of the head, yeah? It's just to clarify this movement. So come back onto your left side, with the left arm long, the right hand standing in front of your chest, the right knee in front, uh, the right knee on top of the left knee, and look back again and incorporate, that's a nice word, isn't it? Incorporate, 
spring into the corpus, spring into the body, incorporate this movement of looking to the left with a little bit of an extension. It's a couple of movements going on, right? It's a twist and an extension. Quite exciting. And the side bending. And everything has to work together. And you can feel the ribs on the left side. Just try to notice things. How do you coordinate this with breathing? What comes? What becomes apparent to you? What what comes up? What 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 stuff can you feel? What's the feedback from your body? You try to feel and do a movement at the same time. It's two tasks at the same time. The more you can sense, the more you can feel. This is actually two words. I. Uh, I suppose, feeling and sensing, but that's on one side, on the other side is the, the movement itself, you, you do the movement, so these two things, the more you can feel, the more refined you can do the movement, isn't it? And there's many things you can feel, in your neck. Uh, there's so many parts you can uh, bring together, make, make them work together. Okay. Then take a rest on your back just for a second and then come onto your right side. With the right arm long, the left hand standing, and this time bring the left knee on the floor just to see how that constraint works on that side. And again, turn your head to the right over your right shoulder. And feel how you need to find the movement in your upper chest, in your thoracic spine, in your neck, in your head, in, in your lower body, in an, in an extension. Add this little extension. Extension, twist, side bending, the shoulder comes forward. Compare with having your left knee on top of your right knee, how that works. And then come back onto your back. So usually, if I teach this in class in the evening or my, uh, my morning class, I would I would need like 15 minutes, one hour for this lesson. But now I'm doing it faster. We're now 10 minutes in, so it's really fast. What, I, what, I, what I'm showing here you uh, to you on YouTube. Uh, if you want to stop, you can stop at any time. Or we just continue. Uh, it's interesting to do a fast one as well, isn't it? And you will have to do it uh, a couple of times. It's like it's not a re it's a replacement for stretching, but it's not a replacement for engaging uh, with movement. Yeah. You have to do it a couple of times. The first time you will see the, the greatest results, of course. If you, in in lessons with people who do it the first time, the, the differences before and after are enormous. It's like worlds between. It's so beautiful to see how everybody starts to organize their movement, to be more flexible and everything fits more better together. It's, uh, it's just beautiful to see. Come on. I hope you're on your bed while I'm talking and run, uh, just uh, making my thinking here. Just feel how you're resting on your back. So that's already a couple of moments. You can replay the video, of course. Now, the next thing we're going to do, come back on to your left side. So that's my phone. I have to go stop my phone and then edit the video. <laughs> next thing we're going to do, come back onto your left side. Ah, with the knees on top of each other, the left arm long, the right hand somewhere, maybe on your upper arm. Your upper arm. And start, this time we're going to the other direction. Start to turn your head towards the ceiling. Yeah, just roll your head on the floor. Don't lift your head, just have your head rolling on the floor towards the ceiling. Of course, also use your right shoulder. Also bring your right shoulder to the right and open yourself towards the ceiling. Do this a couple of times until you can 
Bring your right arm over your chest, maybe, yes, over your chest. Just enjoy this movement. This is all about enjoying yourself. Improving and enjoying until you see how far you can go. Some people are very flexible by genetics. Some have been, um, some are flexible because they put in a lot of work uh, with stretching. So maybe you don't, you cannot turn all the way to the ceiling. Just do, do what's easy for you. So don't overdo anything. And then bring your right arm to your right side. Maybe you can stretch it out on the floor. Hey, don't use tension. <laughs> just uh, take it easy. Huh? Just do what's available easy. So, and then, what are you going to do? The, the legs are still to the left side, you op open, you turn your head towards the, the, the ceiling, and then try to find your chest bone with your fingers. Uh, start at the clavicles. Here, the clavicles, these are these collar bones, they're easy to find here. And you will find there's like two little knobs here on, on top, right? Can you, can you find them? The two knobs? And in between there's a little, little U, 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 like a U tube, little U, U shape, a belly. And that's where your, where your chest bone starts. And just try to feel where is your chest bone? Where is it? Is it like a hard bone? You can tap it, yeah? And on the sides of the chest bone, there's the ribs. There's a ribs attached. You can feel, you should be able to feel like eight, seven, six to eight ribs. And be careful, just use your fingertips. Don't be hard on yourself and just try to feel where are your ribs? So, this is an advantage if your chest isn't too big, right? Just feel. Where are your ribs? Can you identify them? The ribs will be hardest, like the mountains and the valleys, is the muscles in between the ribs. But the muscles, the intercostal muscles, these have to let go. And now that you have found your chest bone and your ribs, try to invite the chest bone to roll towards the right, the right side. It's an invitation. It's not a pushing or a pulling. It's an invitation, just like a, a gentle, like you touch your fingertips on your chest bone and it's like a question. Will you come with me? Will you please come to the right side with me? Just a little, very gentle, not a push, it's not a pull. It is a push and a pull, but not too hard. And we do it with the different ribs, with the upper ribs and then the middle ribs and then a little bit lower. And they all have to be able to go separately in a, in a small scale, of course. And you can also feel like under your, under your arms, the armpits, there, you, can, you can touch ribs there. Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe they hurt a little bit because there's too much tension there, there because maybe they are sore, because there's always on the muscles there. Just like try to find where can you find ribs? Where can you find ribs and invite them to roll to your right? You can use your whole arms to see like if there's a, a way to invite your chest to twist to the right side. Maybe on your back, just feel where can you feel ribs? Where are my ribs? How to invite them to go more to the right, you can take your head to the right, play with this. And then come back to your left side and take a break on the left side. Then come back again, turn your head upwards. <clears throat> bring your right arm to the back, take your left hand, bring it over your head, take your right temple and pull your head a little bit to the left. It's more like guidance, a little bit to the left. Don't roll your head, but keep your face towards the ceiling. That's very important. Keep the face towards the ceiling. And bring your head to the left, 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 until this movement is clear. And when the head is to the left, lift the head a little bit to look at your right hand. 
and then coming back down again. And that's a very peculiar moment. It's, don't strain yourself. Try to find this moment. It's a very peculiar moment. Uh, many people in class have difficulties to find it. I cannot touch you. I cannot come to you and guide your head. That's not possible here on, in, on video. But no. get this idea. Your shoulders are towards the ceiling. Your hand reaches over your head and you drag your head to the left. Maybe drag is a better word than pull. Drag your head to the left, and when the head is to the left, lift it to look at your right hand. It makes a little curve through space. Yeah? And then take a break onto your back. Just feel how you're lying. Nothing should hurt. If, you, if something is hurting, you're doing too much. Then do less. It's not about end range, it's not about pushing yourself, it's about feeling comfortable. Do what's easy, do what's easily available and this will become larger. It's like when you talk to a friend, you talk about things that's easy to talk about. You can go a little bit towards end range, like challenge your friend in talking about things he doesn't understand, but you never push. If you push, your friendship is over. So you just enjoy yourself, and that's what you do with your body, you just enjoy talking to yourself. And come on to your right side, we try the same things on the right side. <clears throat> when you're on the right side, first you roll your head a little bit, you roll, you don't lift and turn, you roll your head so your face is towards the ceiling, until you can put your left arm somewhere behind you, to the left. Yeah, you can... Do this a couple of times, this is a lesson in itself, it's very comfortable, then take your right arm over your head, touch your left temple and drag your head to the right, so the right, the left side must become long, right, the left side becomes long. And then when the head is to the right, you lift the head, you help lift the head to look to your left hand, so that's Can you see that's like a curve, through a curve ball maybe? If you've done that a couple of times and you found it, you take a, a short break on your right side, then come back, bring your uh, face towards the ceiling, find your <coughs> chest bone again. Just identify the parts, the ribs, <clears throat> and then move your chest bone to the left. See, where can you invite it? Turn the chest to the left. And then come back onto your back, take a break on your back. And roll over onto your left side. So now we come back to this turning movement. Let's just check how it is. Left arm is long, right knee is on top of the left knee, right hand is standing in front of your chest or in front of your belly, and you start to look over to your left and see how it goes. Huh? Look over to your left. Feel how that organizes, how, how, how much more easy that is. It always surprises me. In fact, I've been playing with this for two weeks now. Just, it's just getting better and better every time. Let's add one more movement. Bring your right hand onto your forehead and guide your head to look to the left. Yeah, just help the head. 
And then, let's do this on the right side. Turn over onto your right side. Right arm is long, left hand is standing. Look over your right shoulder. Just try, see the, the difference at the beginning, and put your left hand on top of your forehead and guide your, your hand <coughs> to look over your right shoulder. <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? So come back onto your back. Feel how you're lying. Your chest is on the floor. I feel my chest is warm and cozy. It's lying much more, it's more on the floor. There's one more extra movement in the lesson. And maybe I should do it. You can just add this last movement. Come onto your left side, left arm long, right hand is standing in front of the chest. Knees on top of each other, and then you open yourself up so you <coughs> roll yourself so you can look with your face to the ceiling. Get your chest bone again, and instead of uh, pushing the chest bone to the right, you push it down. You go through each pair of ribs you can find on top of your chest bone and push it down. You can, it's like lifting your head, it's like lifting your head, it's like looking towards your right hip. And to push it down. Again, it's more like a guidance, an invitation to go down. When you have done that, it's like an exploration. You can take your time for that, or you can just stop it with me now, come back onto your left side. And then look to your left again. It should have improved even more. It's always something better. You can try it on your right side. One last time. <laughs> Maybe the chest thing. Push down the, the ribs. Now, I, now I'm fast. I want to... Uh, I don't want to make the, the YouTube video too long. As I said, usually this would take an hour, but it's just like fast, fast, fast. Uh, you can take a rest on your back if you want. But, and when you finished your rest on your back, come to, to sit again and feel, and feel how it is in sitting. It's so, such a difference. It, it always surprises me. How, how effective these lessons are. And turn your head a little bit to the left and to the right, just feel how, how that works, how, how everything works together, how, how the ribs can move separately and as a whole, all together. It's quite nice, isn't it? Try the same thing in standing when you're ready to get up to stand. And then do whatever you want to do. Enjoy being in your body, being able to turn better to the left and to the right, having a more flexible chest. Uh, concerning this video, if you like this video, please like the video. If you didn't subscribe yet, subscribe and I wish you a great day and see you in the next lesson.